is something I like to do to my watercolours, especially if I feel they've got a little bit overworked. I'd like this one to have been maybe kept it back one layer, um, but it was just a demonstrate for Trevor. But I'd like to lighten up a few uh, sparkly areas here. I used a bit of Chinese white and it's just disappeared totally. So I could go back with white acrylic or gouache, but I'm going to use a little bit of pastel just to give a bit of sparkle back to some of these reflected lights and colours. You'll hardly notice it is pastel. Um, so it's quite a useful tool to use if you feel that you've <laughs> overworked slightly. And getting back into watercolours, my first one I tend to do, if I did this one again it would be a lot looser. So we're just going to show you how we can use a little bit of pastel into this painting and freshen it up um, before I go on to doing the acrylic uh, twin of it. To do this I'm going to use my Unison pastels, I love these pastels. I've got some new boxes out now, they've redesigned the uh, packaging, but of course the original the contents are just as good, and to me they're the best pastels in the world. Um, Handmade in Yorkshire, and uh, I'll just show you some here. This is these are the colours that I use. And this is the palette I tend to use of pastels. I can do everything I want with a set of pastels all around the world, from Caribbean scenes right through to snow scenes. And they're very useful because they can be used with water as well. We can, as you'll see on my films, we can actually blend these with water and paint them almost like a watercolour and build up. So, what do we want to do here? I just want to bring back a few of the highlights. So I'm literally going to take some white first of all and just touch in one or two other little bits of highlight here and there. That just up. There's Chinese white there, but it's got totally lost. So I'm just going to come back with a little bit of white from the pastels, nice soft pastels, and just touch. Just touch it in here and there. Just to bring back a little bit of that sparkle that we've lost. Just to give it a bit of texture even over these surfaces here. Because it was a, a knot paper, I couldn't really do much with the texturing effects. Just tickling the surface, don't ever do it. We're not going to read the temptation the students have sometimes when they start doing this, they want to repaint the whole thing. So it's not cheating, there's no such thing as cheating. If, you, if it works, you do it. Yeah, don't overdo it, it'd be very easy to get carried away with. Pastel like this. I think I need to. I normally do use a rough paper for something like this, and I didn't this time, and that might have been a mistake as well. Could have left it as it was, of course, but I uh, just felt it would be nice to. Oh, I got rather carried away with this one, didn't I? But, uh, and you meant to just put a few touches of pastel in, but I've really quite enjoyed doing what I've just been doing. There, I'll stop at that. I'm going to stop, isn't I? The pastels away. And there we are. Good you see how I've used the texturing of the pastels now, just to bring out the beauty of the watercolour, to enhance it. Not take it over, not work over it completely, just enhance. <laughs> Right then, continuing with our vibrant colours, uh, we're moving from the watercolour and uh, a little bit of mixed medium pastel onto the acrylics. And I'm going to be using flat brushes again, um, possibly working through into the filberts and the rounds at the end. Um, and let's build this up in these vertical strokes again. I'm really trying to enjoy these vibrant colours, pushing these this broker colour technique of slabs of little slabs of colour together, blending and uh, uh, finding all of these different abstract shapes within this, so keeping it a little bit more contemporary. Let's go for it and enjoy and see the total difference between this and that other medium we've just used. I'm going to start off with about a half inch flat and uh, square end it. And we'll, as before, with the watercolour, we'll start with the sky in this as well. We really want to push these colours on the photograph, it's just a plain turquoise sky there with a little bit of light blue. I want to push that beyond this. So let's take our turquoise straight away and a bit of white and we'll just start to slab some colour on and when it's on the brush if you see it somewhere else 
been used in that other place as well. Canvas showing here and there because I just know where my drawing is then. Maybe a little touch of lemon yellow into that so it goes more green and we'll start to really find some of these lovely colours. These shapes, the background here, the nice technique and styles here. So one colour slabbing in over another as well. Right, straight down to next colour. You can get a lovely blue paint there. Push these colours in this, we can really enjoy ourselves. It's on winter's day here. Let's feel the, the summer. If we push these colours, it means all of the other colours that we put, as compared to it, have to come up in the same colour intensity as well, which is rather fun. Beautiful colour happening up in here, and this is I was trying to find with the watercolour, but it's not quite as easy. If I did another one, I'd probably find it more. I've got to get back into the watercolours. That's the thing. Straight in with our colour. Not going to mess about. Not on a pussy foot today. Just work of colour, beautiful colour. That's why I think you'll enjoy this travel because you just go for it. There's no you don't to worry about washes or glazes or techniques or just enjoy painting some of the colours together as I go along. Rather than uh, mixing them on the palette, I'm just straight picking up the colours on my brush. I'm letting them blend a bit one into another as I pick them up from the palette. I'm not going to mess about this all I can say. I'm just going to pick up the paint, slap it on, adjust it as I go along, just enjoy the freedom of this approach. Look at these beautiful colours we can mix with just a little addition of a blue here or a bit of purple there or whatever. Go down to smaller brushes a bit later on, don't need to yet. Just slap the paint on for the moment. Just covering the white at the moment by slapping these colours in. Yes, get yourself some acrylics, mate. Come on, Trevor, and uh, get into this sort of work. It's uh, really is enjoyable. We can find even more with these colours than we can with the watercolours. Tell me drying this just by the sheer vibrancy of my brush strokes. I haven't got time to discuss all the colours with you on. I've shown you my palette at the beginning of this, so you have an idea of what colours I carry, but how I use them. Not a trade secret, but uh, plenty of my other paint, uh, paintings showing you. Sure. Sarah Lee and going into ultramarine. Put a bit of turquoise into that at the minute just to make it greener. I'd like to take some turquoise now. We'll come down with this shape here. Coming down to there, just down the edges here. And that blue purple I can use on the window back here as well. It's time to move on to the figure, just do some more fine work here. So we'll just take some bouncy under a little yellow worker to paint our head in here. It's 
Well, it was what smaller brush we're going to really need. We're getting away with this one. With this one. Dropping in these highlights, you can see and make the thing come to life. I've spoken for a while because I'm just too busy painting. But, uh, you can see how I'm enjoying these colours now. I'm sure playing between the warm and cool blues again. Here, yeah. playing the ultramarine against the the cobalt against the uh, turquoise. We're still playing with lovely pure colours. Yeah, we've got this lovely mid-tone of light here for the... See I've used quite thin paint in places, I was going to use it thickly all over but I don't have to. And this is the sort of effect we should have been able to get with the watercolour and I would if I was loosening up more, I'd be able to um, did a few of them, I'm sure I'd be able to get this this kind of looseness and colour also going in those these little marks that can just lead the eye in and, uh, even things like this uh, shadow on here can help to lead the eye in pure colours Putting absolutely pure lemon yellow on there, just with that green, emerald and uh, lemon yellow. I really feel that. I'm talking of light blues, I might need to be a bit lighter on reflections on the path even with the, with the blue, just to bring out the other warmer colours of it. that. You see what it, a few little colours can do. Just look for these little highlights of light that are coming down through here, into these leaves as well. Bits of cool light here playing against that there which are rather delightful. I think this is probably one of the nicest ones I've done of this series. It's, uh, it works quite well. I think probably having done that watercolour it's pushed me to, to loosen up a bit on this. Don't want to fill with that one anymore. Now, to sign it, we could put a light signature here, we could put a darker signature here. We'll go for the right hand side and just a little round brush and a lighter colour there. Now, what colour shall I use? Possibly a pink again. Just to give it a nice, just sunlight in the corner. So let's take a close look at that for you. Nice loose acrylic painting to go with the watercolour. And how different again. And if I use water and pasta it will be different again than this. But I don't want to do too many of the same scene. I've got other scenes to do that are just as nice. <laughs> 